Shoom! What's up guys? Today I'm going to show you how to set up a LAMP stack on an Ubuntu server on AWS. So, this is going to be start to finish. Uh, by the time you're finished watching this video, the server that you launched on AWS, you will be able to access with your web browser. Uh, if you would like the completed script uh, from start to finish, you can download it or access it on my Patreon, patreon.com slash Tony Calloway. Uh, or you can just follow this video from start to finish. Uh, but everything that I do that's going to be code related will be available for download on uh, my Patreon from now on. Or you can always just follow along the video from start to finish. But if you support me, uh, I really appreciate it and it helps me want to make more of these videos. Anyways, let's get started. All right, so if you haven't already signed up for an AWS account, you should do that. Just go to aws.amazon.com and sign up for one. Uh, but if you're watching this video, you probably already have one. So I'm just going to log in with my own AWS account. Start by clicking on EC2. And click Launch Instance. All you got to do is find Ubuntu. Should be right there. Select it. And now picking an instance size, that's a topic for a whole video in itself. But what you need to know really is that the T2 type instances run on a credit system. Meaning if you run a certain amount of processing or you use too much computer power, then your instance will run out of credits and then stop working the way that you expect it to or it will shut down. Um, and it's that's why that's free tier eligible. Uh, so usually when I'm pretty much doing anything, I will launch it with a medium type instance, uh, medium, uh, like an m3.medium. Um, if you keep this type of instance running for a whole month, it will cost you probably like 50 bucks. Uh, there are cheaper instances available and if you're just running like a blog or a WordPress or like a basic site, any of these T2 style instances will work. But if you're going to run an intense application, you should not use one of the T2 type instances. Uh, next, you're conf click next to configure instance details. Uh, just one instance. Um, spot instances can be cheaper. Just leave everything as its own default though, unless you have preferences. I'm not going to change anything here. Just pretty much, you know, for the purpose of this tutorial, we can leave everything as its defaults. Next, add tags. Next, uh, review and launch. Oh, uh, security groups. Uh, so this is how your instance will access the outside world. Uh, SSH is so you can use your terminal um, and connect to your instance, but you also want it to be able to uh, serve to people's web browsers. So you need to open up port 80. I think you can just select HTTP. Yeah, it'll be port 80. And you can just leave that open to everything. And if you want to have a SSL, uh, if you want to have an, yeah, an SSL certificate, uh, you need to open up HTTPS, which is port 443. Uh, click review and launch. And click launch. And it's going to prompt you for some keys. Um, you can choose an existing key pair or create a new one. For, this pur for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to create a new one. And you, let's call it uh, tutorial. You can call yours whatever you want. Download key pair. Now you gotta save that key pair. Don't lose it. It's the only way you're gonna be able to access your server. Launch instance. All right, so you've launched an instance running Ubuntu now. And you can see here that uh, I've got some other programs going here, uh, other instances. Um, I'm gonna name this one tutorial. You don't have to do this. It is going to make it easier to find instances, especially if you launch several of them though. So after your instance is launched, uh, it may take a couple minutes, but once it's running, you're going to see a bunch of information down here when you click on it. Uh, what we're looking for is either the public DNS or the IP address. Don't use this one. This is the private IP address and the private DNS. This is what AWS uses internally to manage your server. This is what's available to the outside world. So let's go ahead and copy that. And over in my shell here, uh, which is terminal. If uh, you don't know what this is, if you search your Mac for terminal, this is the program that comes up. 
And this is how you do a lot of stuff uh, with programming and servers and stuff on a Mac. So if you just try to SSH to your server, you can't. it'll ask you about the fingerprint, type yes. Uh, permission denied, you gotta use your key that you downloaded, the one over here. This one's tutorial.pim. So SSH Ubuntu at your IP address, dash I, and the location of your PEM key. Now this will work. Uh-oh, maybe not. You gotta change the permissions. So one thing I do with all of my keys is I move them out of the download folders uh, into my user SSH directory. And then I also, you have to change the permissions. So what we're gonna do here, uh, you can do this with Finder, but it's easier for me with Terminal, uh, especially for the purpose of this video. MV, which is move, downloads, tutorial.pem, and then tilde, uh, This so this tilde key right here, this is your user root directory, slash dot sh, slash. And then you can do tutorial.pem, I'm just going to move it there. So now if you go CD, which is change directory, ls-la lists all the files. And I'm just looking for a tutorial. Grip is like a find command. So you can see that this file is here, tutorial.pem. And then we need to change the permissions on it. sudo chmod, chmod, changes the permissions. There, uh, you gotta type in your password if you've got one on your computer. There. Now, we can SSH into our server here and the path of your PEM key has changed. Which should be tutorial.pem. Whoops. So if you type SSH Ubuntu at your IP address dash I path to your PEM key, you are now gonna be able to connect. So you've got your Ubuntu server running. Now you'll notice, if you try and connect to the IP address, this site can't be reached. Well, that's because we haven't done anything. We haven't created our web server yet. We only have an Ubuntu system running. So we've gotta do a few things here. First thing you wanna do when you connect into your server is sudo apt get update. That's gonna update your server with the latest packages and security updates. And just kinda of wait, and it's fast, it's done. Now we're going to install Apache 2 and curl. sudo apt get install Apache 2 curl. And type yes, or just Y and hit enter. So this is installing Apache 2 and curl. Curl is important for a lot of things uh, lets you, it's basically like the command line web browser. Uh, then we are going to add a repository for PHP. This is uh, basically the most widely used PHP repository. sudo, which is super user do, if you're wondering, add apt repository ppa colon andrej-php on andre yeah i can't pronounce it uh, but that's what it is this is the command enter and it's gonna say press enter to continue or control c to cancel just hit enter again and you'll see over here after we installed apache 2 uh the you now have apache 2 running and it's accessible from your web browser but we don't have PHP running, and that's why we're doing this now. Uh, so after you add that repository, again, do sudo apt get update. It's gonna update all the packages uh, from that repo you just added. Just a little sanity check. And here comes the fun part. sudo apt get install php 7.1 lib apache 2-mod-php 7.1 PHP 7.1-CLI, PHP 7.1-Common, PHP 
PHP 7.1-MB string, PHP 7.1-GD, PHP 7.1-int i, uh, intel, intl, PHP 7.1-xml, PHP 7.1-mysql, PHP 7.1-encrypt, PHP 7.1-zip, PHP 7.1-curl. Enter. Damn. Encrypt. I spelled it wrong. PHP 7.1 MCRYPT. There we go. Hit yes. So that's a big selection of packages that are most commonly used in most types of development you're going to do on a LAMP stack on one of these servers. Uh, you can add or subtract or change as many of those packages as you need, uh, but those are the ones that I would recommend you get started with. And this could take a little while. There we go. Uh, that took about a minute, maybe. Now, if you want to use MySQL on your server and you don't want to use RDS, you can do sudo apt get install MySQL server. Um, my, might as well do it. Yes. But I, I usually use RDS. Um, it's a lot more stable. It handles backups for you. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to do new password for the root user. I'm going to put uh, test. Repeat the password, test. All right, so MySQL should be running here. Oh, darn, I gotta start MySQL. Pseudo service MySQL start. Now, MySQL you root p test. And we've got MySQL running. Cool. Uh, basically, now you can access your web server here. And now if we change our directory, cd var www slash html, we've got index.html. Let's just make an index.php file. vi index.php. Ah. Pseudo vi, ah, darn permissions. There, we've got a PHP info. And let's take a look. Slash index.php. There we go, running PHP with MySQL. That is how you launch an Ubuntu web server running a LAMP stack. And that's it, so now you can access your web server uh, from your browser and you know how to launch a LAMP stack on Ubuntu. Um, if you're interested in learning more about programming, please uh, hit that subscribe button. And if you really, really want to support me, you can do it on my Patreon. I super appreciate it. Again, you can download the whole script from start to finish on my Patreon. Uh, and my next video on this subject is going to be how to deploy with Git to your remote server. Uh, so I'll be able to type a command like git deploy server name whatever branch, uh, and then it will just remotely push with Git uh, straight to your server. It'll be a really fast deployment. Um, and so again, I'll be doing a whole series on how to be a programmer, scalability, uh, database development, uh, something that I'm really good at and I figured I'd teach it to you guys. Uh, so again, thanks for watching. Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys next time. This doesn't mean I'm going to stop blowing stuff up, by the way, or making weird inventions or reviewing things. Uh, this is just an addition to the rest of my videos. Have a great day. And I'm going to teach you how to create... The, the red button on the side. Controller.
avoid this type of attack. Here's the thing. Just be careful. 